and we're going to find the series solution of the second order differential equations near the ordinary point x not equal to zero. So this point right here, this is our point x not. So we know the solution form is going to be y equals the sum starting from zero to infinity of a sub n x minus x naught to the power n. Now, since x naught is zero, so we can replace that right here, and this simplifies our solution form to a sub n x to the n. And if you write out a few terms of this solution, so first term will be n equals zero, so you'll have a sub zero, plus the second term is a sub one x to the one power, plus a sub two x to the second, plus a sub three, x to the third plus a sub four x to the fourth and so on. So the goal is to figure out these coefficients. So the first uh, two coefficients or the initial conditions are given to us. So we have well, at, well, a sub zero is a sub zero at y of zero and y prime at zero is a sub one. So those are the two initial conditions we're given. Now, we're not going to do the typical way that we will find the solution to this problem because of the coefficients. So here we have sine of x. So because of that, we're going to try to find a different approach to this problem. And the key would be to figuring out these coefficients by using that different method. Now, this method, we would call it the successive differentiation. The idea comes from using Taylor's formula for finding coefficients. So recall from before that if you are if you have a Taylor series expansion of a function, then the coefficients are given by this formula. So a sub n, which is the nth coefficient, this is equal to the nth derivative of that function evaluated at x naught divided by n factorial. So that's the formula we have from Taylor series to figure out coefficient of a function that we're working with. Now here, we wanna use this formula to figure out these coefficients right here. So for example, if you're looking for the, uh, let's say, the, so the first two coefficients are given to us. Those are the initial conditions. Now what about a sub two? Well, a sub two, using this formula, it's going to be defined as the following. This is going to be so the y to the nth derivative, which in this case will be the second derivative, evaluated at x naught divided by 2 factorial. That's how you'll figure out a sub 2. So that will go right here. And then a sub 3, we're going to figure that out as the third derivative of this function, evaluated at x naught over 3 factorial. So whatever we get here, we'll plug it right in here. And you can do as many as you want, but the maximum we're going to go for this problem will be up to a sub 4. So the this coefficient is going to be given by as the fourth derivative of this function evaluated at x naught over 4 factorial. And that's where we want to plug in right here. So let's, let's see how we can figure out a sub 2. Well, we need to figure out the second derivative and evaluate it at x naught. In this problem, x naught is zero because that's what we're given right here. So, well, how do I solve for the second derivative? So we look at the differential equation. We just take this and solve for the second derivative. So our second derivative, it's gonna be negative x squared y prime minus sine of x times y. So I simply took the equation that was given to us and subtracted these terms so that we can isolate y double prime. And now here we're going to plug in x naught since we're given x naught is zero. We're going to evaluate all of these expressions into um, at zero. So we will have negative zero squared y prime at zero minus sine of zero times y at zero. Now, zero times anything, well, that's going to be zero. Sine of zero is also zero, so this is really just zero. So the second derivative at x naught is zero. And that's what we want to replace right up here for the second derivative expression. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that. So this is going to be zero over two factorial. In other words, this will simply be just zero. So we know the second, the coefficient a sub zero is going to be, a sub two is going to be zero. Now let's continue to the next one, this one right here. So we need the third derivative evaluated at x naught and then divided by three factorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I take again this expression right here 
and take the next derivative, which will be the third derivative. So we will have the third derivative of y is equal to, now here you're going to use the um, product rule to differentiate this and to differentiate that. So let's do that. Derivative of negative x squared, that's negative 2x, keep the second, minus x squared, dif differentiate y prime, that's y double prime, minus, now we differentiate the next term, which is this one, again, using product rule. So that's going to give us negative cosine of x times y minus, and then keep sine of x, differentiate y, that will be y prime. All right, now we're going to evaluate this at x naught equal to zero. So that would give us the third derivative at zero, that's the left-hand side, is equal to negative two times zero times y prime at zero minus zero square times y second derivative at zero minus cosine of zero times y at zero minus sine of zero times y prime at zero. So a lot of these will disappear. For example, this is zero, this is zero, this is also zero. So all of these are zero. So the only one that survives is the one with cosine. The cosine of zero is one. So we have negative one times y of zero. Now y of zero, we're given that condition. So if you go back to the problem, y of zero is right here. That's a sub zero. So I'm going to replace that in here. So this is going to be negative a sub zero. So the third derivative at zero is equal to that, which means our coefficient a sub three. So if you go back up, it's right here. So a sub three is going to be the third derivative divided by three factorial. So let's, let's replace that. So this will be negative a sub zero over three factorial, that's our a sub three. So I'm gonna compute one more and then we'll plug in those coefficients. So now for the um, a sub four, we need the fourth derivative, evaluate it at x naught, and then we divide that by four factorial. So let's do that. So we now take this statement. So this was our third derivative. We're gonna take one more derivative to get to the next derivative. So here's our third derivative expression. Now let's differentiate again respect to x. So we will have the fourth derivative is equal to, now here again, product rule for each term. So product rule here, product rule here, product rule, product rule. So let's do that. So negative 2x, when you differentiate that, you get negative 2 times y prime minus negative 2x y double prime. So that's for the first term. Now the second term, differentiate negative x squared y double prime. You'll get negative 2x times y double prime um, minus x squared y triple prime minus, now derivative of cosine is sine, so this is going to be plus sine of x times um y and then minus cosine of x times y prime and then the last term negative cosine of x times y prime and then minus sine of x times y double prime so that's our expression for the second derivative sorry the fourth derivative now evaluate this at x not equal to zero so let's plug in zero everywhere evaluate them so we will have now the y to the fourth derivative at zero is equal to negative two times. Now you could combine terms. I think there are some like terms flowing around. For example, um, this is a like term with that one. So you can combine them and play around with a little bit more. This is also a like term. But I think I'm going to just go ahead and start plugging it in. And you'll see why, because a lot of it will cancel out. So this is negative 2 times y prime at 0, and then minus 2 times 0, y double prime at 0, minus 2 times 0, y double prime at 0, minus 0 square y triple prime at 0, plus sine of 0 times y at 0, and then minus cosine of 0 times y prime at 0, minus cosine of zero times y prime at zero. And then um, the last term minus sine of zero times
times y double prime at zero. Okay, so now I'm evaluating them at zero. So let's see what happens. So this is zero, this is zero, this is also zero, this is also zero, this is also zero. Now this one right here, negative two times y uh, prime at zero. So y prime at zero, let's check what that is. So that's one of the initial condition right here. So y prime at zero is a sub one. So I'm gonna replace that. So this would give us negative two times a sub one, and then cosine right here. Now cosine of zero, that's one. So we got minus one y of zero, that's also a sub one. And we got another factor of the same thing. And if you combine them, you'll get negative four a sub one. So that's gonna be the fourth derivative at zero. So there is your fourth derivative at zero. Now let's substitute this up there. So we have negative four a sub one. So I'm replacing it right here, negative four a sub one. So now our solution, let's replace them. So a sub zero, a sub one, would they stay as they are. So here a sub two, I'm gonna replace it with zero, since that's what we got. And then a sub three, that's this one right here, negative a sub zero over three factorial. And then a sub four, that's right here. So this is negative four, a sub one over four factorial. So this is how the uh, solution looks like, but let's go ahead and clear things up a little bit. So we were able to get this coefficient by doing successive differentiation and using the idea from Taylor's series. So our solution now looks like this. So y is equal to a sub zero plus a sub one x. Well, this is gone. So you have negative a sub zero over three factorial x cubed minus four over four factorial a sub one x to the fourth plus so on. Now, if you want, you can simplify four over four factorial and three factorial, you can write that as six, but I'm gonna leave it in factorials. Now, another thing you wanna do with this solution, now this is a nice solution, leaving it here is totally fine. But another thing you can do, just play around with it, group the terms with a sub zero and a sub one. So for example, I can rewrite it this way. So let's pull out the terms involving a sub zero. For example, this one and this one. And there are more after. So we have a sub zero times one minus one over three factorial x cubed plus and more terms. Plus now let's pull out the terms involving a sub one. So that's this one and this one. So let's factor out an a sub one. Then you'll have just x for the first one minus four over four factorial x to the fourth plus and more terms. So there you have another way to express the solution where you have two independent solutions. For instance, this is your y as an infinite sum, y sub one, and this is your next solution, y sub two as infinite sum. All right, so I hope this helped you understand this uh, new method of finding the coefficients. The downside of this method is there's no recurrence formula for this, so you would have to do it the other way that we approached uh, previously. All right, I will see you guys next time. Take care.